strands physics and torus. The agenda of my talk will mainly focus on how strand hair simulation works in Resident Evil 4 and what could improve in the future. I will also mention some of the work on strands torus and animation pipelines. First, let me introduce the strand hair simulation workflow. Artists use Onetrix uh, to build the strands in Maya, then export the data as Alembic files. The files are then imported to IE engine. The Alembic strands are bound to mesh. Mesh deformation and object collision gives strand constraints. Constraints is solved by using a method called position-based dynamics. After that, a guiding system is used to blend simulated strands to all strands, which saves on cost. Based on the framework, I will break down this talk into three parts. The bending part will introduce how strand bend to meshes. The simulating part will introduce the method used through simulation. The guiding part will introduce how simulation results interpret and how to build a weight system for guiding. First, I will show you uh, some simulation results. This asset is used for checking if the simulation works correctly during development. After testing this asset and making sure everything works fine, we start to test the Resident Evil 4 assets. These are the simulation use cases from Resident Evil 4. These are additional simulation use cases from Resident Evil 4. If strand hair configuration is on, hair simulation is used during Resident Evil 4's gameplay and in cutscenes by default. Let's go back to the first topic. How strands bend to meshes? Strands are composite uh, of multiple line segments. Basically, rays are traced from line segments, then are checked to see if they intersect with the meshes. If they intersect, the heat triangle information is recorded. Then, CPU based SAHBVH is implemented. Because not every computer supports hardware ray tracing. The performance is acceptable for practical use cases because the thing is not that complicated. Only bond mesh and the bending strands exist for the intersection test. There are several cases that uh, traces could fail. If the rays do not intersect with the mesh in the first, tr first trace, the ray will be traced iteratively from two directions, taking the minimum distance to strand the root position. If all traces fail, an invalid flag is recorded as the result. If the mesh is intersected, mesh indices and UV coordinates are written to uh, bend the asset. For runtime logics, comparing a deformed mesh and the rest mesh transformation. Compute the transform matrix from every triangle in a deformed mesh. Update the matrix through all strand vertices and keep their transformation consistent with the deformed mesh. The next step is to simulate the strands. Basically, our approach is based on extended position-based dynamics, abbreviate as XPBD. XPBD is a method that directly manip manipulates the vertex positions of object meshes instead of forces or impulses. It solves a sort of constraints on the positions by using an iterative projection scheme. 
where the positions satisfy the constraints of each iteration. XPPD improves position-based dynamic by introducing a compliance parameter that controls the stiffness of constraints. Orientation deformation based logic is implemented based on the paper position and orientation based causality rules. This paper presents a novel method for simulating elastic roads within the PBD framework. It proposes a new type of constraints to couple orientation, uh, which are represented by quaternions. Strain meshes are used directly as a constraint in PBD. It also shows that the method is fast and robust and could handle large deformation situations with few artifacts. Let me talk about concrete implementation. Basically, like other PPD methods did. First, external force is applied through advanced steps, including air drag force and gravity. Collision is solved after that through strand vertex. XPBD constraints pro projection is iteratively applied to solve the system. Finally, guide interpolation is applied for propagating guiding strands to all strands. Every frame is then separated into sub-steps. It needs to be noted that when solving sub-steps, the current and the previous status need to be updated to avoid the frame instability through simulation. Sometimes simulation results are not as good as the artist, artist expected for large motions. The full motion gradient through every sub-step is clamped to a max value to relieve this problem. But it still doesn't solve physically accurate. For handling cutscenes in Resident Evil 4, initial frame instability also existed through teleport movement of the character. A reset position flag is used to address unexpected deformation when warming up the first frame. Another potential problem is that the first frame hairstyle changes from what artists designed due to leaking friction or internal force between hairs. Recent research from Tencent Lightspeed Studio solved this problem. The information can be found in their paper titled Seg-Free Initialization for Strand-Based Hybrid Hair Simulation. Please read about the details there. About guiding interpolation. For improving performance, only 1% to 5% strand budget is used through simulation, which is called guiding strand. The algorithm for deciding which strand could be the guiding one depends on its shape similarity and the position distance between strand roads. All strand shapes are encoded into a large group. The first step is to use the cluster method to aggregate similar strands. After that, finding the mean value through cluster. The chosen candidate is used as the guiding strand for the strands around it. Then, the other strands are assigned the weight from the guiding strand. One to three guiding strands are used to give weight to a normal strand. About performance, Resident Evil 4 artists uh, created on average 20,000 strands per hair model, which include an average of 2 million vertices. The image shows the strength count and the vertices count of the main characters from Resident Evil 4. After shading optimization is finished, a four-character scene runs at about 60 to 70 milliseconds per frame. A method which cuts off strand count is used to reduce the performance load. But even only 30% of strands are used in a scene, it still doesn't achieve the performance request for PS5. This is a scene from Resident Evil 4, where Luis 
Leon and Ashley are on screen at the same time. Let me explain in more detail. You can see from the image that reducing the strength count from an average of 20,000 strengths to 7,000 strengths, the performance improved from 16 milliseconds to uh, 35 milliseconds per frame. But still, it's not good enough for the title's objective. We know that humans have about 100,000 hair strengths. If the strength count is reduced too much, the strands will either become thicker or bald spots will appear. So reducing the strand count could work if the head is far from the camera. If not in that case, it would raise the risk of causing artifacts. Even if you cut 70% of the hair strands, it's still not enough to reach real-time performance. Another approach is provided for the LOD system to reduce the vertex count. First, the average strand length is calculated. Expectation vertex count is also given from parameters. After that, the vertex is interpolated through the average length divided by the expected vertex count. One of the problems with this approach is it is difficult to smoothly interpolate the deformation between different LODs. One idea is to use the same model to calculate the simulation and interpolate the consistent simulation result through all LODs, which will sometimes cause unnecessary budget. Recently, Eris Zhang did some work for the progressive LOD interpolation through closed simulation. If you are interested, please check her work for details. After the vertex LOD is applied, 15 milliseconds is saved totally. 30 milliseconds is saved for rendering budget, mostly from shading. 2 milliseconds is saved from the simulation because vertices are burdened for the simulation. Rest and the guiding position update is unavoidable through simulation. The image shows a comparison between the original, original result and the LOD result. 80% of vertices are cut through LOD progress. You can see the LOD result is much smoother. The artist accepted this result as one of the solutions to accelerate the performance. But when reviewing this method, smooth artifacts could be improved by adjusting the LOD interpolation algorithms. The results could be improved in the future. The final results are displayed on the slide. In addition to these adjustments, dual scattering optimization was also used in the game scene to further improve the performance and to achieve title performance objectives. Let's discuss simulation performance for PS5. Generally speaking, 1 millisecond per character in Resident Evil 4 is not bad, but still could improve. It depends on the vertex count in most cases. Half of the time, it's using, uh, it is used for strand position bending and strand guiding interpolation. When reviewing, the bending progress might merge to final guiding progress, which could save 0.1 to 0.2 milliseconds. Simulation may also be improved through the latest technologies. Expect for simulation, strand animation framework is also provided. Strand and rig information is generated in Maya and exported as a strand asset. Pumped mesh is used to save joint and animation info. Chain simulation is what was used in the PS4 generation simulation of Resident Evil 4 so it could also be used through this approach as well. Joint matrix and the strand weight is imported from Maya. At first, artists bind joint guides to strand through a strand auto weight system. It doesn't work because the joint that the artist provided does not totally match what the strand looks like. Some artifacts cannot be removed through bending a different mesh to a strand. And after discussing it with the artist, the weight is then controlled in Maya. Then the weight data 
and saved as an alembic file and uh, imported to, into IE engine. After that, strand band weights to the pumped mesh, animation, or CPU-based simulation could also work through this approach. But still, it is not recommended to use this approach because the visual quality is not good enough for both animation and CPU-based simulation. With the development of new hardware, a more accurate approach should be used through real-time simulation. Avid presents a novel method for simulating frictional contacts between thin nodal objects using the alternating direction method of multipliers, or ADAM for short. This algorithm solves convex optimization problems by breaking them into small pieces each of which are then easier to handle. It is based on the augmented Lagrangian method, which replaces a constrained optimization problem um, by an unconstrained one with a penalty turn and a Lagrangian multiplier turn. The algorithm splits the frictional contact dynamics problem into two sub-problems that are much easier to solve individually. Recently, the algorithm was also optimized through a local global solver that largely improved the performance in GPU. This is one of future direction for providing a more accurate simulation model in real-time games. On the other hand, another group uses FEM and NPM to accelerate the speed of accuracy which named the hybrid Lagrangian material point method for simulating hair. This method utilizes a Lagrangian mesh for contact and a Eulerian grid for material deformation. The Lagrangian mesh is used to compute the contact forces and impulses and to transfer them to the grid. The Eulerian grid is used to compute the material deformation and the stress, and to update the particle positions and the velocities. The paper also demonstrates the effectiveness and the versatility of the method through various samples involving frictional contact with the diverse materials, such as snow. In conclusion, this talk introduced how strand physics works in IE engine, from bending to simulating to guiding progress. The talk also briefly explained the strand animation progress in IE engine and the direction of future strand simulation efforts. That's all my presentation. Thank you for listening.